the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-khawf. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an embedded characteristic of every believer. For you to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, there is the compassion and love that we know that Allah has for His creation, but He also warns us through His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where He says, Ya ibadi fattaqoon, O my servants, have a conscious awareness of me, a fearfulness of me. Allah describes the believers in the Quran, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَ قُلُوبُ that when the remembrance of Allah is descended upon you, O Muhammad, when the verses tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadatum imana, that the verses that you have been given increases them in faith, wajila qulubuhum as a consequence of that is that their hearts gain as, gains an awakening and an awareness that makes them fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, in Surah Al Baqarah, in Surah Al Imran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, many different types of places in the Qur'an. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ Don't fear others more than you fear me. وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are complete, completing of your faith. You know, Aisha radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, the wife of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu the mother of the believers, the one who you and I would have the same love and affection and care for the way we have for our own parents. She asked the Prophet sallallahu about a verse in Surah Al-Mu'minun. She says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, uh, what is it with these people who Allah describes that when they give their charity, their, their hearts are in anguish and in fear. That they're doing something good, O Messenger of Allah, but why are they still afraid? And the Prophet wasallam he describes by saying that they have given this charity, but they fear that it may not be accepted of them. Now this is where I want you and I to really focus on what it means to fear Allah. Fear is not this emotional thing that all human beings experience. Notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to all of the prophets in the Quran in different ways, sometimes one by one. For example, Musa alayhi salam, Moses, the great prophet of Allah, the one who speaks directly with Allah, as he stood in front of Fir'aun, may the curse of Allah be upon him, the, you know, the, the greatest adversary of righteousness. Pharaoh, you know, he, he's a person of power, of influence, of military might, and Musa is commanded by Allah to go and speak to Fir'aun. And as Musa enters, فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً Musa. Allah describes in Surah Taha that Musa, when he stood in front of Pharaoh, inside his heart, he felt fear. Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. And I want you to see that fear is a natural emotion. All of us are going to experience it. But that's not the type of fear that we're seeking to speak about when we speak about Allah. Uh, Dawood alayhi salam, he's in the middle of his prayer place. He's in his castle. He's a king. He's a prophet. He's a messenger of God. And two men who are actually angels in the form of men enter into his private quarters. فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خيفة. Uh, he moved back in fear. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the three angels, Israfil, Mikael, and Jibreel came in the form of men, he didn't know that they were the messengers of God, the angels of God. When he saw that they weren't eating and weren't speaking to him, although he was seeking to be their host, he understood that they were sent by God as a punishment. He feared for his people and his, for his family. So I want you to know that fear is something that is a natural emotion. But the fear of Allah, al-khawf, min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something that is really particular for you and I to understand. The khawf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to expect Allah's punishment at a time of distraction from Allah. That when I'm doing wrong, is at that point is where I should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the moment I do something that I know I shouldn't do, one of the deterrents that should stop me from continuing it, or enjoying it, or not stopping it, in each of those three cases, is that I grew in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that moment I say, no, hold on, I can't escape the sight of Allah. I can't do this haram in a place where I'm not going to be observed. I can't hide from the angels that are recording these deeds. That in my heart there becomes a restlessness, a fearfulness, and an apprehension of being caught. 
Usually that's associated with the fear of other people. So Allah says, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي Don't make the center of your fear should be the fear that you have of other people. Make your fear the fear that you have of me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another word in the Quran that is associated with the word fear in the Arabic language that when it's translated in English, you just read the word fear. It is called khashya. وَهُمْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ From the khashya that they have of Allah, that they become more sedate and humble and compassionate in their dealings with other people. Khawf is that you're fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it might not be on a building of knowledge. It could just be that there is something that has brought you to a heightened awareness of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you said, I'm not going to do this haram. In the hadith of the seven types of people who will be given protection by Allah on the day of judgment when nobody else will be protected but these seven categories of people, one of them who was invited to commit sin, him and another, you know, him and a woman of beauty and of power in strength above them in influence you know they were about to do the haram together and the only thing that stopped him he had desire he had you know intent they had opportunity except that he said inni akhafullah no i'm scared of my relationship with allah and he turned away and he stepped back from the haram khawf of allah is at the time you're about to commit an act it's what saves you it's what pulls you back from the brink khashya is a little bit more specific. Khashya is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to have enough knowledge that it prevents you from getting to the place of haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Taha ma anzalna alayka al Qur'ana li tashqa illa tadkiratan li man yakhsha. Taha, O Muhammad, O mankind, I, this Qur'an was not revealed to make your life difficult or miserable. It is only a remembrance and a reminder to those who have khashya. Not just who have khawf, but they have an understanding of why they should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've learned that this is something that I should not do, so I'm not even going to go there in the first place. I'm not going to allow myself to get into that place where I may be tempted to do the haram. Khashya is a more specific heightened level of knowledge that leads us to growing our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want that to be something that you and I deliberate on, think about, are aware of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to fear Him. Ya ibadi fattaqoon, O my servants, protect yourself from me through your fear of me. And that's why the word taqwa is usually translated sometimes in English as the fear of Allah. Meaning that if I fear Allah, it will protect me from the punishment of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr, نَبِّ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَّ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Equally, O Muhammad, share with my servants who I've commanded you to lead to good that I am the most gracious in forgiveness and compassionate in my mercy, but also equally inform them that my punishment is most severe for those who do not seek to take a path of righteousness and morality with me. Of the greatest things that we fear, there are three important points. One is that we fear that we are in an act of sin and enjoy it and not feel the pain of having committed it. وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. Your iman becomes low when you do what's wrong and it doesn't upset you or when you see others involved in the haram and it doesn't upset you. Something you view, something you hear, something you experience and it doesn't bother you that Allah is being disobeyed. Number two, is that you commit an act of haram and it's come to an end and then you relish it and have enjoyed it and you look for the next opportunity although you know you've disobeyed Allah. Your fear of Allah should be increased to bring that away and out of your heart. And number three and finally, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatest sign in my life and your life is that we are fearful of the good deeds that we do of not profiting us enough that they are accepted by Allah because we weren't sincere and the inequity of our errors in other places hasn't protected us from the mistakes that we are still performing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our khawf 
and our khashya. We ask Allah to increase our fear of Allah, our fear of doing wrong, our fear in being with the company of the sinful, our fear of doing the wrong and enjoying it, our fear of doing the wrong and not repenting for it, our fear of doing the wrong and not having good deeds to cancel them out, our fear of not approaching Allah with good deeds that will help us to eliminate sin. My final word to advice to you is to know innal hasanati yudhibna sayyat that good deeds cancel out sinful deeds. And one of the ways that you increase your fear of Allah is that you do good deeds that increases your hope of Allah's acceptance of them that cancels out your sinful deeds. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. The greatness, the greatness of the remembrance of Allah is that which is greater, and that is a salah. That your prayer is one of the greatest ways that you manifest your fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salli lahumma wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to your brother Yahya Ibrahim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.